Did you know that according to the National Council on Problem Gambling, the leaders in gambling-related research, 85% of people in America have participated in gambling? And this makes us ask the question, should gambling be more tightly regulated in the United States? One of the things that has become very prominent in the, past, in the last few decades is the use of online gambling, which is especially popular in the sports betting world. According to Nielsen, 46% of adults are interested in sports betting, and most of that is, oh, sorry, are interested in online gambling, and most of that is done with sports betting. With this popularity of online gambling, there has been many issues arise with it. One of them being is the increased pressure on athletes to perform. Now athletes are worried about playing for sports bettors, not just themselves and their team. Another issue that, ar that has arisen with the popularity of online gambling <clears throat> is it harms the integrity of the competition. One example of this was Atlanta Falcons receiver Calvin Ridley. According to Michael Rothstein, even though Calvin Ridley did not gamble on his team to lose the game, even though he gambled on his team to win, that still harmed the integrity of the competition. In addition to this, gambling has its economic benefits. Online gambling allows an opportunity for the creation of more jobs in the gambling industry. And rather than the typical job you think of when you think of like gambling in a casino, this online gambling allows more jobs in like corporate or branch offices instead. And according to Copeland, uh, state and local governments have made over hundreds of millions of dollars in tax revenue off of gambling winnings. And with the removal of the Professional and Amateur Sports Protection Act, or PASPA as it's known, uh, states are allowed to determine whether or not they allow sports betting in their state. And if they do, they're allowed to tax or set the tax rate on it. And usually states tax around 34%. And in addition to that, uh, there's also the local income tax. Another major thing one must know when talking about gambling is the addiction associated with it. And this is called problem gambling. According to Flora Matheson, a medical sociologist and a mental health and addictions expert, Problem gambling is where someone is unable to stop gambling. And this is due largely to the, fact, or to the stimulating effect that gambling has on the brain. This effect is very similar to the one caused by drugs and alcohol and can lead to depression and higher than usual suicide rates. These suicide rates are the highest of any type of addiction and often hover around 20%. Another issue with problem gambling is debt. According to Tom Copeland, <coughs> a, oh, a professor of politics at the Centennial Institute, Opportunity cost is where someone will go into debt to, by spending money on non-essentials, which hinders their ability to buy necessities. Problem gambling is an example of this because people will go into debt to sustain their addiction and will sacrifice the basic necessities of life, such as food, hygiene, and clothing. And this leads us to our first solution, which is to limit the number of bets based on the household income of the better. Many people who suffer from gambling addiction are part of a lower economic class. This lower economic class has less money and the casinos can prey on these individuals wants and needs. Limiting the number of bets based on household income would help save these people money and prevent their addiction. A large part of gambling addiction is people trying to make their money back, but this can create an endless cycle of spending money to make money. Through limiting the number of bets based on household income, the prevention of gambling addiction can become possible. And this solution has quite a few benefits, with the first one being it minimizes debt. People from low-income households would not be able to bet large amounts of money that they could not afford. This would stop them from betting amounts of money that could put their family in financial turmoil. Our second benefit is it reduces gambling addiction. People would no longer be able to bet as frequently or with as much money as they did previously. This would give them the opportunity to think about the consequences of their actions, and oftentimes they would reconsider their decisions. And our third benefit is it leads to stronger mental health. People would no longer have to worry about putting their fi family's financial future on the line over a game of cards, and this would give them a better peace of mind. While limiting the number of bets based on an individual's household income does have its benefits, there also are quite a few limitations that go along with the solution. One of them being it would be very difficult to enforce. A whole new job would have to be created where somebody would have to check each person's background who is betting to check their household income. Another limitation that goes along with the solution would be the in increase in criminal activity, including the use of fake IDs, and there would be more illegal gambling because um, people of a lower class would not be able to gamble legally. Another limitation that would go along with the solution is, would be the divide between classes. 
Since the wealthy would have the upper hand when it comes to participating in gambling, the lower class could definitely become envious. And this leads us to our second solution, which would be to completely ban online gambling. One of the biggest issues with gambling today is how easily accessible it is. Betters can simply bet from their phones without ever having to physically see the money leave their pockets. By forcing betters to physically go to a casino, this trip can act as a deterrent for helping them not form addictions and saving their money. Some consumer benefits are that one, gambling becomes harder to access. The reason it becomes harder to access is that people no longer have the luxury to gamble from their households. Instead, they have to drive somewhere where gambling is allowed and they're uh, around other gamblers. The reason this is a benefit is that under the supervision of other gamblers' employees, this could possibly cause some intimidation, per se, uh, that they would not be uh, gambling as much money or possibly losing all of that money. Another, another benefit is that this solution is much easier to regulate. The reason it's much easier to regulate is that uh, sportsbook apps can just be taken off of the App Store and companies like Google can just ban the sportsbook sites from their platforms. Uh, with, this solution, uh, with the solution of limiting bets based on household income, you have to worry about background checks and that you're uh, che checking everything that they're doing and that nobody's lying about it. But with this solution, you're able to just uh, ban it from the App Store and the internet, and so it's much easier to regulate. Along with these consumer benefits are also various mental health benefits that go with banning online gambling. Since online gambling is way easier to get addicted because one can just participate from their home, banning this resource altogether would most definitely lower addiction rates. Another benefit that goes along with banning online gambling is that the most of the sorry, all of the integrity of our athletics would be maintained. Another mental health benefit that goes along with this solution is the mental health of the athletes themselves. Since now the athletes are just worried about playing for themselves and their team, not the better. And as with every solution you'll hear tonight, this one has a couple of limitations. And the first one is decreased tax revenue. Um, sports betting brings in large amounts of money, and according to Keith Lowe, the professor of business statistics at Jacksonville State University, and Alan Gilbert, it brought in over $40.8 billion <coughs> in the past couple of years, with total gambling tax revenue being a lot higher. Since the majority of sports betting takes place online, almost all of this tax revenue would be wiped out. The second limitation is it would greatly anger people. People could no longer bet from their homes and would instead have to travel to major gambling hubs such as Atlantic City or Las Vegas to place bets. They would not have this convenience anymore and they would be greatly annoyed. And our third limitation is job loss. Sports books and online gambling sites employ large numbers of people and almost all of them would be laid off. According to Macro Trends, DraftKings alone employs over 3,400 people and that is just one of the many major gambling sites. After considering all these factors, we decided that our best solution would be to ban online gambling. This solution is the most feasible, and while it still allows betters the freedom to spend as much money as they like, it adds extra steps that can act as a deterrent for preventing them from forming addiction. Additionally, this solution would protect athletes from betters who are trying to use them for profit. Also, athletes such as Calvin Ridley would have an easier time managing their athletic integrity. The ability of the solution to protect both the athletes and the betters from the risk of gambling makes us believe that the best way to regulate online to regulate gambling in America is to ban online gambling. Thank you. All right, a few questions for you, gentlemen. First of all, Rowan, what is a way in which your team's resolution makes you think differently about your own individual research? Well, my research was mainly based on like what the leagues and everything thought about it, and a lot of that was very positive because it brought in so much money. But upon like like talking with my friends and my teammates, I learned about more of the downsides of it and how it can negatively impact the leagues themselves. So. Okay, Katie, reflecting on your colleagues' work, which one had the greatest impact on your overall understanding of the problem your group identified? Uh, the research that probably had the most influence on my understanding was leaks. I never really thought about the mental impact it had on like the gamblers themselves and leaks. Uh, IRR really brought that into my perspective, considering he talked about how a lot of these gamblers who are losing all this money are like committing suicide and going into this depression. Luke, having finished your project, what, if anything, do you consider to be a gap in your team's research 
that if addressed would make you feel more confident about your conclusion? Uh, I definitely think uh, one area we didn't really explore um, was definitely the political, more of a political side of things, and definitely maybe, especially in America, which um, political parties associate themselves on either side of the debate. Okay. And Cooper, give one specific way that your thinking changed as a result of learning about Rowan's findings. Um, my thinking changed whenever looking at acts that Rowan researched, such as TATSA, which re had regulated gambling in the past and had now changed. Um, it, it made me realize that there was a lot of laws that hadn't been in place in the past that limited the amount of knowledge that we could have about the future of regulating sports gambling.